Gege has just dropped fresh copium for Gojo fans with the release of Volume 26, a new panel of Gojo opening his eyes. When compared with his stay at death, it clearly looks like he's returning. Or, you know, this could be an added detail for the volume, where it's Gojo's reaction to Sukuna's reality cutting slash. But there is another clue that backs up Gojo's rebirth, which I'll discuss later in the video, as there's another insane reveal. Chapter 255 has moved us one step closer to Sukuna using Fuga to reveal his curse technique. A secret was just exposed. The king mentions in Martin. A hand sign directly linked to a deva, one of the kings of hell in Buddhism, where we witness another black flash that has returned his RCT and power. He can't keep getting away with it! But it's not all bad news. Maki, Yuji, and Miguel return, much to Sukuna's surprise. Miguel refused to come to Japan at the beginning, but the reason why he is in this fight is because of Ghetto. What? Before Yuta joined the battle, he requested Miguel to aid the sorcerers. However, as any normal person with common sense, Miguel outright rejected this plea, stating that Sukuna has the ability to defeat Satoru freaking Gojo. So it was logical to not go on this suicide mission. Even Yuta offering to do Dogaza where you get on your knees and bow down to show ultimate deference in Japan, which is akin to throwing away your pride and begging like a dog it's pretty much what takaba did with kinjaku even that couldn't convince him but that's when it's revealed that one more member of ghetto's old cart laru was with them who you know the guy with the heart tattoos on his nipples who this guy in jjk zero yeah everything is being thrown into sukuna's gauntlet however rather than asking miguel to risk his life they simply wanted him to land the final blow on sukuna after he's burnt out from fighting gojo but this is still not enough to convince Miguel because bro has PTSD from the racism by Japanese people as he states that why do these guys always think that a cheerful black person can just survive anything? Seeing how Miguel literally wanted Gojo to ask him for help with his head down, LaRue took him aside for a private conversation, reminding how everyone in Ghetto's cult loved him. This goes back to how Ghetto saw his group as his chosen family and he was willing to go to any lengths to protect them. Even Miguel states that he did everything because he wanted to follow Ghetto. But since Gojo spared him, he had trained Yuta and fulfilled the debt, meaning that he wanted nothing to do with Japan anymore. Hence, he wondered what LaRue meant by reminding him of Ghetto if he wanted Miguel to avenge him or take his body back. LaRue declined these claims and asked Miguel to mourn him and fight with everything they had. As a way of telling Ghetto to take care in heaven. Miguel quite literally creates one of the funniest moments ever, stating there's no way he's in heaven, he's definitely in hell. If you get to heaven and you don't find me there, you have gone to hell. <laughs> And this is how we know Gege plays favoritism. Because somehow, my man Toji Fushigoro went to heaven despite all of this being his fault breaking the chains of fate in the first place. But Geto went to hell according to Akatami? Well, let me just remind everyone. They're nothing but monkeys. 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 I hate those monkeys. Yeah, he deserves it. Look, guys, we get it. Sukuna is bored. All these sorcerers can't bring him any excitement. So what is he doing with his free hands? Well, he is playing AFK Journey, of course. It's a free-to-play game on iOS, Google Store, and PC that revolutionizes the RPG genre because it's not just an idol game. No, 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 no. It's an ethereal fantasy with crazy visuals, gameplay, and PC-compatible side-scrolling. Step in this magic land and embark on a fantasy quest in AFK Journey as Merlin, gathering heroes across six races and winning tactics with different teams. There are over 40 heroes for free doing for you to explore during the official release. You can explore huge maps and solve fun puzzles all with the effortless one-handed gameplay. The other hand? 
Well, that's up to you. <laughs> but that's not all. AFK Journey has a unique and interesting character customization system for you to cook with. By engaging in events with a 7 day login, you can receive 200 free draws. And by using the code AFKJOURNEY88, you can redeem a ton of exciting giveaways. However, this talk no jutsu convinces Miguel to fight against Sukuna alongside LaRue, except on the condition that Gojo and Yuta lose as well. Plus, Sukuna isn't allowed to use his domain expansion anymore. But why was Yuta so focused on Miguel joining them? The answer is that his curse technique is unique and extremely useful. According to Gojo, even though it's not scary, it's his physical abilities that make him a formidable enemy. Yugi mentioned how Japan has a monopoly on curse energy. As most sorcerers are from Japan, it's rare for a sorcerer to exist in another country. As a result, Gojo reaffirms that 99% of Jujutsu sorcerers are Japanese and they use curse energy to strengthen themselves. On the other hand, Miguel, who has a rare skeletal structure and muscles, becomes a threat compared to others. In other words, racist Joe was like, are you strong because you're black or are you black because you're strong? <laughs> you can't make this sh up, people. It reminded me of that this one clip. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. Okay. That's black. That's racist. Damn. However, Miguel states that he's not special because he's black, but it's because he's him. We're just like the other characters. The hype train begins where Gege makes a Gojo comparison. If Gojo and Miguel fought each other with only physical abilities strengthened by curse energy, Gojo could win in terms of defensive movement in the marathon, but would lose when it came to striking and a sprint, which makes Miguel perfect to finish off a nerf Sukuna. Now, if you break this statement down, it's pretty insane. Nanami claimed Gojo's punches are always critical, and that's without Azuri Blue attached to it. Remember that Miguel managed to survive a barrage of these strong punches in JJK Zero, making it one of the best defensive feats already. Like, did you know Gege himself called Miguel the MVP of the prequel fight because he managed to buy time for Ghetto by keeping Gojo engaged in a fight and then and survived in the end? Speaking of respect, even Sukuna is interested in his curse technique. It brings out buffs and debuffs of himself and the opponent without using a domain expansion. It is called Song of Exorcism and helps his body catch a rhythm to dodge curses and enhance his physical abilities. My man was even dancing to dodge Sukuna's slashes. So in other words, Miguel is Eddie Gordo from Tekken as he even uses Kapu Error. As a result, Miguel is capable of landing a heavy punch while Sukuna dodges Chosso's supernova. But wait, didn't Chosso join the donut club? Well, he managed to heal himself. Let's not forget, everyone got stronger in the time skip due to training or cheating as Yuta would put it. Chosso is a special grade cursed spirit, he can heal himself easily, whereas for his brother in chapter 252, we see Chosso guiding Yuji through the process of reverse curse technique as he should have died four times over by now. However, this distraction helped Yuji land a blow so powerful that craters erupted. Now you might be wondering, wait a second ABD, why is Sukuna not using the world cutting slash to get rid of everyone attacking him right now? Well, this question has finally got an answer. Beforehand, it was looking like a plot hole as even in chapter 255, we see Gojo confirming the power of six eyes where he's able to determine a technique instantly by just looking at you. So why couldn't he tell Sukuna? Well, Gojo achieved more than we initially believed. Sukuna had to sacrifice the ease of using the world cutting slash because he lost his hand due to tanking purple. He could not make hand sign requirements. Therefore, he made a binding vow to send one slash without any need of them. That way, Gojo wouldn't have been
being able to sense it or react in time. However, the trade-off is that now Sukuna must complete the chanting, hand signs, and point a direction just to use its power again, as the requirements have increased. I think this is pretty fair, and Gege did some solid writing. Think about it. The gap between Sukuna and Gojo became even wider as soon as he learned the model of the reality slash. The fight was over at that point. Sukuna could now destroy any and every opponent instantly without having to move a muscle as his slash upgraded. But now he's made a permanent binding vow that doesn't allow for that. Sukuna was so much stronger that he didn't even have to do that. Remember, he had a one-time transformation back to his full form anyway, which would have given him four arms and two mouths required to instantly use world cutting slash without any restrictions. If Sukuna did that, we would be in a much worse situation. Kashimo would have instantly died since there would be no more chanting, no more hand signs, or a sense of direction required. There wouldn't even be a fight at this point. Sukuna has actually nerfed himself on purpose just so he can face a challenge and have fun. Furthermore, the foreshadowing of Maharag's ability was already there. Sukuna compares it to a late throw in a rock paper scissors. That is literally and exactly what he ended up doing against Gojo to win. But given the fact Sukuna needed a binding vow to defeat Gojo, what's stopping Gojo from doing the same thing to revive besides what? There's a variety of ways to boost his reverse curse technique that was replenished, such as sacrificing six eyes. Sukuna did tell us if Shoko used RCT on Gojo, it would be 50% less than using it on yourself. But characters like Uta Hime's curse technique can circumvent that, especially since Sukuna made a wrong assumption in chapter 234. He thinks the hollow purple 200% was boosted by a binding vow, as he didn't know Utahime and Gakuganji were there. But the narrative perfectly fits into Shoko's statement from chapter 220 that Gojo was an idiot thinking he was all alone. She was there to help, which would make it absolute cinema if their gamble works out, following the theme of Jujutsu Kai. As every chapter so far has Sukuna winning the odds to his favor, like tanking Jacob's ladder, tanking Unlimited Void to adapt, and much more. I mean, landing a black flash brings Sukuna's RCT back, which means his arms will come back, right? So, how's that any different to Gojo again? But let's go deeper. I'm talking. Sukuna uses a hand sign named Enredden, which is also used for malevolent shrines. But wait, he oh, uses shit. another hand. Yep, just like at the beginning of the fight, Sukuna couldn't sense Maki and sliced off his hand. It shocks him that Maki survived, despite taking the full force of a black flash, as he didn't know that Maki has the most durable body in Jujutsu Kaisen. This tells us that Sukuna expected her to die, but we know Maki was granted a body of steel with unrivaled physical abilities and presence identical to Toji. I mean, that dude survived getting hit with Gojo's reversal red. He didn't even break a single bone in his body, despite crashing into a building with such intense force due to it. So with Sukuna losing two arms and having no reverse curse technique, Yuji starts having a moment like Piccolo. Yes, 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 I can Well, Gege said no, as chapter 255 leaves a clue regarding Sukuna's curse technique. Gege did mention in an interview that with enough research, readers may be able to figure it out. And since this man has only begun showcasing his true power, it's because he is the representation of a deva named Mara. In Buddhism, Mara is depicted as one who delights in destruction. Buddha defying Mara is a common pose seen in sculptures. When we contextualize this regarding Gojo and Sukuna, we can see it fits quite well. On one one hand we have Gojo whose name Satoru itself means enlightenment and he represents Buddha throughout the story even quoting the guy and then we have Sukuna 
who is linked to Mara, who are often associated with desire, attachment, and the ego. As the manga even stated that Sukuna only lives in his pleasure and displeasure as an enlightened being. Unsurprisingly, their appearances match too, with Mara depicted as having multiple arms, mouths, eyes, and faces. In fact, just like Sukuna, this devil is also seen as the personification of death and the transient nature of existence, reminding people of how temporary life is. Yet again, this is what Sukuna stands for because people try to defeat him due to their ideals, but they meet their fated end. He interacted with the people before they passed going south like with Kashimo and Jogo. Then he's called a natural calamity and justifies it to Yuji in chapter 214. However, chapter 255 tells us his hand seal is associated with Enma Ten, a deity that protects the southern direction, which was mentioned by Nanami to accept death. However, the story of Buddha's enlightenment often involves a confrontation with Mara, where good prevails over evil, as Mara did not simply wish to divert Buddha's enlightenment, but he believed he was the one worthier of it, just as Sukuna told Gojo in their fight. He uses the Buddhist term for a unenlightened person in this panel, so everything is starting to link together in a chain. Mara is the collection of all negative emotions of humans, the same as Sukuna and the merger as he is the king. The only way to stop curses is to accept negative emotions. Going back to how Akatami mentioned the importance of ethics and morality in Jujutsu Kaisen, the author's own interpretation of his story is that if no one is really right, then no one is wrong either. Each character is guided by their own ethics. But to enjoy more peak fiction, watch this video about a new tale beast that Naruto helped create.